This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, and welcome to another edition of Hawaii's Living Legend Lawyers Project, brought to you by the Hawaii State Bar Association and ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Craig Weichdahl. I'm an attorney with uh, Bayes, Long, Rose, and Homa, and I'm a former leader of the Hawaii State Bar Association and have the privilege and honor of serving as host for today's program. Now, the Living Le well, I knew I'd, I'd get caught on that. The Living Legend Lawyers Project is an opportunity for us to meet and talk story with some of the attorneys who have been the pioneers in our profession here in Hawaii, who have made a difference both uh, in, among attorneys and in our community. And today, today's program called Promoting the Rule of Law, we have a wonderful guest. Ray St. Chu is here with us, a pioneer uh, for women in the profession and for attorneys in general. Ray, thanks so much for being here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Craig. Great. Well, right now, I want to start by just getting a, a little bit uh, of information about you. How did you start into law and, and, and start on this road? Well, um, I guess I grew up in a family of uh, PhDs. You know, my oh, father okay. was a college professor. My mother was also a college professor. Uh, and so they said, well, you know, I guess you'll be going on to graduate school. and We'll plan for that. And so um, rather than going, I was thinking of psychology. Uh, but when I was in college, I took psychology courses. <laughs> I found that everybody who was teaching psychology was a little bit neurotic. <laughs> and was probably in, in the subject area because they're trying to figure out their own problems and so forth. Anyway, oh, I so I said, I think maybe I should uh, go into the law because I like things that have a beginning and an end. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that was the second choice. It was teaching psychology or go to law. Practicing psychology, oh, but yeah. you know, of course, practicing psychology, there's never an end. <laughs> you know, I you see. never find the resolution. Whereas, of course, with law, you know, we strive to move towards resolution. Sure. Um, so I decided to go. Well, and then I was hesitant to go to law school because of the fact that I thought it was so male dominated and yeah. that it would not be a comfortable place for me. But I figured, just going to go for it. You know? mm -hmm. So I did. And um, I entered law school just at the height of the Vietnam War. And so uh, they were you know, joking that maybe you know, it would be a lot of disabled uh, men that couldn't go to war or women. Mm -hmm. you know? Of course, luckily, um, I <clears throat> entered the law school, and there was maybe 10% women. And a lot of them were not straight out of college. A lot of them had been married, raised a family, and went back to uh -huh. law school. But anyway, um, after I graduated, I thought, well, this is my chance to kind of move to where I want to live for a, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, <clears throat> uh, I thought, well, I'm going to the, I'm going west. You know? oh, okay. Either California or I was thinking California, of course, and then I ended up uh, in Hawaii, and um, I was assigned to the Hawaii Legal Aid uh, Society, yes. um, and I worked there for a while, and then uh, Brookhart was the uh, public defender at the time, mm -hmm. and I thought. You know, it'd be really cool to be able to just go right into court and build the confidence and get to know the system, mm -hmm. um, which I did. I um, had about 130 misdemeanor cases when I started. Uh, wow. Practically the only one doing misdemeanors. There was another lawyer that did half time misdemeanors. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, it was a, a great initiation into the... Did you enjoy doing that? Yes, That I seems did. like a really challenging way to write, jump right in. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, I had a lot of help. You know, the judges sometimes were a little bit askance at me. Uh, like if I was in another court when my mm. case was called, um, they, you know, I'd come back into their courtroom and they'd go, where were you? You know, I mean, one or few yeah, yeah. of them had a very, very stern attitude towards me, like, you got to prove yourself, girl, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. And then also um, other lawyers that were practicing in district court at that time uh, 
you know, after a few months, they, they said, uh, what kind of case do you have? I mean, like I was the defendant, like, oh, I not see. as <laughs> a lawyer. Right, you know? right, right. And so, um, you know, and of course, they always get confused and think that maybe I'm, I'm a secretary or a paralegal. Right, 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 right. That must anyway, have been difficult. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I just kind of slough it off and figure, you know, I'm going to keep going, sure. of course. Um, you know, and then I, I uh, moved up to circuit court doing felony cases, mm -hmm. and that was a great experience. I probably had about 40 jury trials in a period of about wow. three years. And um, Did you enjoy going to trial? It was, it was a lot of pressure, you know, making sure you get all your witnesses lined up, and then a lot of times there were two or three cases scheduled for trial on the same day, on mm. the same week, because the court figure, you know, has them all kind of lined up in case one, one or two settles or, or settles. Or, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but for an attorney, you know, not knowing for sure whether your case is going to trial or not was tough. But, you know, we had to be prepared. And, sure. of course, um, uh, well, public defenders didn't have as many resources as the prosecutors, you know. Uh, so we could not rely on the one investigator we had, you know, to help us line up witnesses and so yeah. forth. Uh, but anyway, it was um, it it was fulfilling. But after after all those trials, I I said, well, I got to move on to something else. So I worked at the legislature, and then I opened up my own practice, um, taking just about anything that walked in the door. Um, so, well, Ray, let me toot your own horn here for a minute, because somewhere along the line here, you decided that not just for me, I want to make things better for women lawyers as a whole. Exactly. And you're one of the founders of uh, Hawaii, women, Hawaii lawyers. women Lawyers. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, while I was in law school, it was the watershed years of a civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Warren Court, and uh, every other week, you know, there was a major uh, case decided by the U.S. Supreme Court mm -hmm. about the rights of women, rights of uh, welfare recipients, the rights of defendants. Uh, and uh, I worked at the uh, Maryland Attorney General's office uh, mm. during the summer, and in the plaza outside the office building were women protesting and, you know, pulling off their bra and, you know, okay. <laughs> swinging it around. And I, you know, and I, I really um, agreed with all the things that the women's movement were sure. moving towards at that time and, uh, uh, and to this day, of course. But um, uh, so I figured, um, you know, that uh, I would form an organization uh, bringing women lawyers together uh, because at the time at, when I was a public defender, there were very few women that were visible mm -hmm. to speak of. You know, most of them worked in insurance companies or in offices as uh, somewhat of a uh, legal assistant or uh, they were not in court, in other words, sure. uh, every day. Um, so it was the prosecutors and the public defenders that um, uh, were mo the more visible ones. But um, uh, so I thought, well, I'd wait till the first class of the UH Law School mm -hmm. graduated, which was 1973, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, I think 1973, and I recruited uh, several of the law school graduates to help, to help me start that up. get started. So we, well, I think we have a picture. If we look at uh, photo number three here, this is... I believe, a newspaper article that uh, has you piloting up the 1978 Constitutional Convention and also Why Women, Women Lawyers Foundation. Right, right. So there's a picture there of Patsy Mink uh, sitting next to me at a woman lawyers meeting. Okay. And um, 
uh, you know, and the top picture is uh, myself uh, speaking at uh, the Constitutional, Hawaii Constitutional Convention, 1978, um, where, you know, there was a, you know, since we were a very new state, there were a lot of issues that we had to deal with, such as uh, uh, the way to pick judges, a Judicial Selection Commission, right. uh, and then the um, women, the uh, OHA was formed, Office of uh, Hawaiian Affairs were formed, mm -hmm. and um, they, um, you know, gave a voice to the Hawaiian people. Uh, uh, and, and a bunch of others, environmental issues, which you know, I think is the best of any other state that I know. Um, and no nuclear power in, in Hawaii. Mm. Uh, several other very aspirational things that, that okay. got passed. Because we have some other photos here of some Hawaii women lawyers. Do you have uh, photo number four to show? And, and I believe that there are a lot of people that went on to careers in, uh, in law, but in, in politics and other right, things, right. but uh, went on to become judges and, and others. This is a, a group of Hawaii women lawyers, correct? Right, right. Well, we were um, celebrating, uh, uh, we would off, I can't recall exactly what, who, whose success we were celebrating, but when uh, someone uh, got appointed judge, like I see Leslie Hayashi and Lee Crandall in the yeah. picture. And I know for sure that when those two became judges, uh, we all got together and had lunch and celebrated their success. Okay. So it was a, a very good network. Um, and, you know, we. Well, certainly. And you were the one instrumental in bringing that together. Right. Well, the, uh, the formal organization of Hawaii Women Lawyers. Um, uh, Carol Monley was someone who, who kind of carried the torch on okay. uh, because right after we formed it, we, um, I, I ran and, and was selected for the Constitutional Convention. Mm -hmm. So she was a staff member at the Constitutional Convention and she also um, took the reins of um, uh, of the Hawaii Women Lawyers and, and you know, got things going um, more on an organizational basis. Okay, but this is all, and I'm just gonna use it, the, the lawyer's parlance, and this is all non-billable time. I mean, this is all efforts that you're making to better, better both the community, but in particular the community for the lawyers, for the women lawyers yeah. uh, in our state and right. such. And, um, and you did that on top of Raising a family, yes? Right, yes. right, you absolutely. Have, you have two children? Have two children, right. And you can tell me a little bit about them? Oh, yeah, they're wonderful children. Uh, Laura, One of them went into law. Yes, yes. So our Derek, son Derek, was. yeah, went into law. Uh, he was born in 1984. Um, and our daughter is uh, uh, joining the, the UH faculty as a full-time tenure-track professor this fall. Oh, that's so yeah, so um, so someone went into education in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, <laughs> my father was a professor, as I well, that's mentioned what you, you earlier. Mentioned, right? yes, so. so I guess it gets passed on in the genes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Although the name of the program is promoting the rule of law, in addition to doing that, you've promoted women in this profession throughout your career, and you've done it professionally as a practicing attorney, but you've also done it through your role with our Bar Association, and we'll talk some more about that, but through founding and uh, helping to found the, the Women Lawyers Foundation, all on your own time. And at the same time you did that, and you sort of, you were able to you know, raise a family and a wonderful family to show for that. I think there's a message here uh, for you know, women coming into this profession, and that is maybe there is a way to have it all, if you will. How did you do that? Well, uh... I, I wonder that myself. <laughs> um, I think um, being organized and trying to kind of compartmentalize the various parts of your life, um, you know, like do not hesitate to hire help to, cl to clean your house, to make your life easier and, and more organized. Um, and just, you know, make sure your partner or whoever else uh, 
you know, that lives with you is also helping to take care of the children. And just, you know, various other things that uh, is always, uh, and, and the mindset and the willingness to just, just put out. Okay, well, we're going to take a little break here. You're watching uh, Hawaii's Living Legend Lawyers Project on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Craig Wagner. I'm here with Ray St. Chu, and we've got a lot more coming. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. This is Hawaii's Living Legend Lawyers Project. My name is Craig Wagnall and I'm serving as host for today. I'm here with Ray St. Chu, who's been telling us a little bit about her career and more importantly, the impact that she's had on women lawyers throughout our state. Ray, you were telling me sort of during the break a little bit about some of the impact and some of, uh, you know, some of what that meant to you uh, over the years of, of working both professionally and you know, on your own time in the community and such to help improve the lot, if you will, improve the situation for women entering this profession. Can you share right. a little bit of that? Yeah, well, as I said earlier, that there were so few women lawyers yeah. um, in Hawaii at the time when I started that um, I was looking for friends and people I could uh, connect with and talk about my, uh, talk about cases, talk about uh, issues that come up. Um, and so, um, of course, you know, uh, finding, being a founder or instigator of getting the ball going on Hawaii Women Lawyers was, uh, was an important thing. And as you can see from the pre previous pictures, um, we have a, a strong bond uh, among the women lawyers, uh, you know, that, that were practicing early on. Um, and c I continue to be really good friends with mm -hmm. um, many of them. And uh, I think that's important. And, and, you know, that would be a piece of advice I'd give to all women lawyers yeah. is that, you know, they, they find uh, people that they can relate to. They find mentors. They find friends that have similar interests or going through the similar... Build your support group, if you will. Exactly, right? exactly. Okay. Now, you didn't stop there, though. You could have, and it would have still been incredibly impressive, but you sort of parlayed that then into leading our Bar Association. So let's talk right. a little bit about that. How did that come about, and, uh, and what, what brought you to want to do that, and then, and then what did you do? Yeah. Well, um, I, just, I just enjoyed... Um, a lot of the bar activities uh, throughout my career. And, um, you know, and then of course, at, at some point, about 19, early 1990s, um, uh, there was a, we, a group of us started the Hawaii Women's Legal Foundation, which, um, uh, Is that that? I think we have the, that photo, photo number one, if we could take a look at that, that, might give us a little bit of a picture of is that the Hawaii Women Lawyers Foundation yes, that you were involved yes, with? Yes. yes. And that's so, down at the bottom um, of that. Yeah, so uh, so we we found well the bottom is a, a article about the Hawaii Women Lawyers Foundation okay. uh, in the Bar Journal. Uh, we changed the name in fact to Hawaii Women's Legal Foundation because 
it's not just about women lawyers, it's about women's sure. legal issues. Um, and um, uh, I think I saw a picture of you as a Supreme there. Yes, was that? yes. <laughs> that was in one of the Hawaii State Bar Association annual dinner. Okay. In which, you know, the, the um, uh, entertainment was the lawyers who didn't really have any talent, but we tried anyway. And uh, it was a lot yes, of fun. Yes, you were right there yeah. with, with Judge Murray Milks and Sandra Sims, Sims and yourself. Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, so it was, uh, it was other entertainment too, but uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. And, and I think the 1993, which is just over, over next to that, yes, uh, that, that was the first bar dinner, wasn't it? Bar dinner, yes, yes. the very first, right, okay. when uh, Sherry Broder was president and we honored um, uh, lawyers among, amongst us uh, that are in the picture. So, but uh, you had to be elected to serve as president of the bar. And I, right. if I'm right, you were the third woman president of our bar. Right, right. Yes. Right. And the first Asian woman, that was in uh, 2011, I think. No, yeah. no, I'm sorry. 2008 no, was, was the, 2009. Okay. 2009. Okay, yes. 2009. Yes. Okay. It was right after the... the How difficult was it to do that? You're raising your, your children. You've got a law practice. How did you balance all? Uh, staying up late at night. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I think technology helped. Um, you know, um, uh, I mean, of course, you know, that's more in the last ten years. But um, um, but just just the drive and the willingness to kind of get move up to the next level. Sure. Yeah, and um, and you know, and I really enjoyed being a Hawaii State Bar Association president. Uh, you know, a lot, many HSBA presidents have said that their year as the president was like a highlight of their legal career. And I can understand that because, you know, you're, you're looking at the big picture of where the bar is going, where the lawyers are going, and how to improve uh, their impact on the community and improve their own uh, practice. And it lets you take a macro view where yes. you've been so involved in the micro aspect of practicing law. And I can tell you from that experience because you and, and, uh, and your husband Rich played uh, a very large part in a decision of mine to, to pursue a similar path and such. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, certainly without the, right. many of the obstacles that, that you faced as you went into doing that and many of the other things you've done. Um, but then you were instrumental also in taking what has always been uh, the Bar Association and helping to create a foundation. What can you tell us about that? The Bar, the Hawaii State Bar Foundation? Foundation, yes. Well, a lot of that, ca that came from my experience with the Hawaii Women's Legal Foundation. Okay. Uh, because we are the charitable arm of the Hawaii Women Lawyers. Right. Uh, and they, they're a membership association uh, but uh, the foundation supports the, the membership organization in many, many ways, not only financially, but, um, uh, you know, other ways. Uh, and, um, uh, and I could see how beneficial it was for both organizations uh, to have a charitable foundation stand up next to the membership organization and of course with uh, the bar association we have well probably over 6,000 members sure. but maybe 4,000 that are actively practicing law mm -hmm. so it it's a lot of lawyers and and um, uh, you know what, what what does the Hawaii State Bar Foundation do well, you are the treasurer, so I, I you am. collect so money. So I'm asking a question that is obviously rhetorical for me. I, I, I know the answer to that, but I yeah. also I want you to be able to share that yeah. because you're serving as vice president now. You, you've uh, served in the past as president of the foundation. Tell us a little bit about what, I mean, why. Well, obviously, there's enough of a reason yeah. there that you want Our to Our main goal in. Is, um, is to help the Bar Association mm -hmm. and to enhance their work. And also, the very important part of being a lawyer is to provide 
services to the public. Pro bono work, mm -hmm. we have a rule in our code of ethics that uh, lawyers must provide pro bono work and help the community. Um, and, um, you know, so we raise money and we uh, have a, a donor list uh, from uh, those who number, have... Number six there, maybe we could take a quick look at that. This is a donor list of, of, of fellows. Of uh, fellows of the Hawaii um, State Bar Foundation, right here. Yes. in which um, we, we solicit donations from individual lawyers that we turn around and give out to various people in the community mm -hmm. uh, who are serving the public. And, and more recently, yes. of course, with the Big Island and uh, Big Island um, uh, volcano, uh, activity, people being displaced from their homes. So we've been well helping as, with that as well. Yes, yes. as well as Kauai. Uh, well, let me ask one other question because I, sure. I want to get this in because it fits right into the theme, which is if, what is your message to young women who are entering the profession now? Would you tell them don't do it or would you tell them do it and what, what's your do message? Do it. Do it for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think legal profession is well suited for, for, for women because uh, they're very verbal, they're very organized, and um, I mean, not that men aren't, but that, you know, that, that they should have the confidence to get into the legal profession, um, uh, you know, and, and the balancing act is, is fun, it's good. Yes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I think we've already got the message out that we want 50-50 uh, going forward mm -hmm. as far as judges are concerned. Um, uh, but there are other issues that, such as um, that are coming up now, such as sex harassment and uh, women's choice, you know, trying to kind of keep religion out of women's private decisions mm -hmm. with their own bodies. Sure. So, um, and then of course the, the other thing of um, sex harassment, feeling comfortable about coming out about that to, you know, basically stem the tide uh, and, and that it's not okay for, for men to act like boys will be boys type of behavior. So anyway, sure. so, and, you and, know, that's... And as lawyers, you're armed particularly to handle that one. Exactly, right? exactly. So well, that's it, fantastic. Yeah. Well, it, you know, not only are you a pioneer in this, but uh, you continue to do that and continue to be both an inspiration and a help and a support to those women entering the profession. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for... And that about, about wraps up, you know, our latest uh, episode of Hawaii's Living Legend Lawyers. This was uh, Promoting the Rule of Law was our show, but it went a lot further than that. And a big mahalo to uh, Ray St. Chu, to Think Tech Hawaii, and to the Hawaii State Bar Association. I'm Craig Wagner saying thank you for being here, and there'll be another episode, so look forward to that here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.